There he says that Noam is what's called the B, the level of Bina, the level of understanding that comes above from above. So the Noam is what we say before we pray, we say before we learn, please Hashem help us that we should understand, but not just understand in a mundane way, but understand in a global way and in a cosmic way and in the way that you want us to understand. So the hit kashrut that we want to make, the connection we want to make with the upper levels of our own soul, each one of us, and the upper levels of the souls that we're connected with, and the, um, the upper worlds, Right, that's what this pair, this shar is about. Shar bait is that the leshem opens up in leshem hakadam hakadam He opens up um, in shar bait. He's skipping over a lot in shar aleph. There's nine or ten prakim in order to get to things that we can feel that we're we can relate to and we can really get. And then you can go anywhere in the book. But um, there's a sense that um, there's, there's, there's here. there's a sense that this is a class that's been in the middle of people going very deep and between being almost like a public class. Almost being like a, a public lot. class. A public okay. class, when I get into public mode, it's different. And so if I see, if I see and other people give me feedback that that's not really what we were interested in, so we'll go offline and come back down into, you know, the kind of learning that uh, I've been doing for many years. Anyway, so we'll see, though. We're always open to what, what, the best we can do with, the, with what we have. Okay. So the lesson is... Um, is interdimensional. He's going to connect us up to the highest roots and show that the whole system is a unified system and that we're never severed, we're never disconnected from it. What, what we, I think we've mentioned it in the past that what Western civilization tried to do is to disconnect us. It says that you can believe if you want in things above, but they're really, you know, that not true. Western civilization, a Savian civilization, um, mocks the spiritual or makes little of it or distorts it and contorts it and makes it that if you believe in it like you're crazy like Rabbi Nachman said if the God that you don't believe in I don't believe in either <laughs> because, because the God that you don't believe in is really not the really is not the real thing so we want to get us connected to the one who's the, who's the one who's the oneness of ex of existence that's the base that's deeper than existence that's the very foundation and the, the of, of who we are what we are deeper and deeper and deeper when you connect to that level then you come out changed yeah maybe you can't stay on that level you can't live on that level but you must touch it you must be able to be in it that's what Shabbat Religion was was supposed to be for us. That's what the holidays were super mundane experiences being lifted up above and able to sense our connection to, to the greater to the greater universe of which we are a part. And then to set us back down into the world back again and again, but with that connection now still alive. So you can internalize and integrate that those incredibly powerful transcendental experiences into your existential reality. And they become then the they become then the, the tools that you need to rectify, to, to, to enhance the positive reality of godliness in your life. Oh, and maybe I'll just say that, that you need the transcendental experience, what we call the, the vertical experience, the vertical transmission, in order to be able to come back into my existential reality and begin to make clear my house and to be clear who, with who I am and, and clear with, with who I am with others. I mean, how many people are just seeing themselves when they look at the world and they look at other people? How many relationships go down the drain because I can't see who you are and you can't see who I am? We're just, you know, it's like 
So Kabbalah, if Kabbalah is not going to help us, Kabbalah, meaning the reception of the higher wisdom, is not going to come into us and become something we can utilize in order to lishaper and, and to, 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 to beautify and to enhance consciousness. So, hello, what's it about? So you're really saying it needs to become, in a sense, the basis of your existence. It's, 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 it's your reference point. Yeah. You need, yeah, I'm not saying there's different, shell, no, there's different ways to say it. You know, it's a reference point outside of outside of our mundane existence that gives us that gives us a way of looking at our world and our life and the way of the, who we are from that higher point of view. The Baal Shem Tov wrote three letters, three famous letters, two of them to his son, Svi Hirsch, and one of them to his brother in law, Rav Gershon Kittiver. And his main Torah there is know that Hashem is there with you, watching you, not peeping Tom, not trying to trip you up, but watching you, knowing you inside and out, and rooting for you, right? So the fifth, I don't know if you remember if I told it here, but it, the the father is peeping, pe peeping, peeking out from behind a tree and looking at his son playing ball. Did I, did I mention this recently? You have mentioned it, I don't know how recently. So the father is looking out from behind a tree and he looks at his son and his son playing ball with his friends feels his father's eyes. He feels his father. He looks and he says, Abba, father, thank you. And uh, then the father disappears behind the tree. And because the boys are all yelling and throwing the ball at him and he gets right. So he goes back into the game. And this happens a few times. So the father is actually very happy that the boy knows that while he's playing games, what are they playing? The games are the games of life, and they're important games. They're not just they're not just silly games. They're games of interaction with human beings, things that we want to do, things that we want to do to make life better. To people who are very moved to do to make to to be active in the world, right? That's good. That's a game from the point of view of heaven that you came down to play those games in order to make this world a better place. But eventually the son says, you know, I want to go meet my father, right? It's a Vashem Tov Mashal. And no more I want to do that, I want to come back into my game and, and integrate that relationship, that and that awareness into my, of my of, 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 of the higher existence into my life. It's never going to be just going up and going out and going away. Every prophet was told, including starting with Moshe Rabbeinu, no, he could probably... Abraham, starting with Moshe being at the burning bush, go back down to Egypt. And Moshe says, I'm not going down there. And Hashem says, you are too. And that's why I brought you here. That's why I gave you this incredible experience. So, okay. So uh, going up and coming back, like connecting to our higher soul root, connecting to the higher worlds, to the higher perspective of, of, of existence. The perspective of the Gabina, which is Olam Abba, which is the eighth sphere from below, which is not part of the seven, get lifted up to Bina on the holidays, Purim, Shavuot, Yom Kippur, all of them are Hanukkah. They're all, they're all super mundane in order to come back down with as much as you can of that incredible consciousness of yourself as a soul. Neshama is the same letters as the word Shmone, eight. So just like Shmone, eight is above the world of seven, and Hashem in the oil is above, it floats above water. So the neshama, most of the neshama floats above us. The leshem, together with the, the grar, both of them are very, and the, and the, and the nefesh hachaim, they're all three of them very strong in the fact that our essence, personality is our ruach. When I point to myself when my little baby is crying at night, or in the old days, and they say, it's me, it's Abba. I don't say, it's me, it's Abba. It's me. I find here. This is this is like my this is the super conscious. This is our conscious personality, and these are our subconscious. So our neshama, our ruach, our nefesh. So the leshem says that in, in the gra and in, in his commentary and sefer yitzira says that only the neshama sparkles, sparklings down into us of intuitions, of guidance for us. It's like a guardian angel. And then, of course, more Kabbalistically, though, it actually the lowest extremity of the neshama comes and dwells in the Kodesh Kodeshim, in the whole, the holiness of our being, 
at the top and it spreads out from there. But it's really the most of the Lashamra is above it. It's a makif. And the more I can internalize of each six of each closer makif, the more more makifi, more open up for me. So life becomes incredible process of and of progress and, and growth. Okay, so that's a little bit of an introduction to what I want to speak about here in the, in the Vashem. So he starts out in Shar Beit. We've spoken about the reality of Hashem's having modulated his light in order to reveal it. He modulates it and, and lowers the frequency in order to create the possibility of other. So one of the things that we've we've mentioned in passing in previous classes was this and we, and we sent it out this this here of uh, the five super Gilui. we spoke about it in our first class the um, it's a it's a five level system he maintains the five level system which is a very for me i i happen to love it i like i happen to love it i yeah. this five levels of soul there's five levels of universes, there's five levels, right? There's five Hamishim, Hamisha Humshe Torah, there's five Torahs, five parts of the Torah, five books of Tehillim. Five is a very is, is a beautiful, is a beautiful number. And it means that the four levels of the Yud Kevavke have a level above them that's their source level. So the same thing here, that Orin Sof is the source level for all the four levels that he that he lists here. He calls the second level after Orin Sof, he calls it Kav Vitzimsum or Tsimsum Vekav, which is the creation of a place in which Hashem is going to reveal his light in a much, much more measured way, a modulated way, right? And then Adam Kadmon, Atzilut, Briya, Yitzirasiya, it's a beautiful system. Each part is an entire unified system, and yet all of them together are one complete unified system. So he introduced us to this whole idea in the beginning of the book. And he says, after having done that, and it's through this system of five that Hashem, that the ain't of nitpashet ma mitatoha ne'elama. That's the, the, actually the, the interesting, not title, but the name, not even the name. That's that's the way he refers to that aspect of ain't so, which is above names of amitato ne'elama, Hashem's hidden reality, amitato reality, truth, truthful existence, ne'elama hidden. So he came forth from hiddenness. He is still there, unchanged, behind and beneath and above and everything unseen, unknown, unknowable, unchanging. And then there's this system that the so created in order to create the possibility of other, right? And he's at every stage, even though there's a lessening and diminishing of the light at every stage, there's an aspect that doesn't change. The lesson will speak about it beautifully. So he basically goes, he goes, he says, let's go in. Let's see what the Ari really said about existence. The Ari was a master who received from Elio and Navi, who received these, these deep, deep, awesome concepts that change your whole life, your whole, your whole, your whole way of looking at things. Atzilut here meaning the entire system, not just Olam Atzilut. He became, he revealed himself in the emanation or the world of emanation or the the through emanation atzilut is la atzil to emanate va'yidezeim see it amitziut the olam odbia through this he brought forth he brought into existence these three lower worlds called bria yitzira asiyah yet closer down to us our physical world 
And then when we look up, he's going to start now and say, well, really, the truth is we're going to look at it now from the bottom up. I had to start a little bit with what's the whole big picture. But you can't really get it until we start down here at the bottom with things that are familiar, and then we'll move upwards. That's what he's going to say. So he says, we've talked about how the, thing, how the whole thing started up above. So the whole thing was always in terms of the of the of the, the system of the area is the description of the of the emanations, the emanation of God's light that is constantly moving from one level to a level that's lower than it. And he and the Ari goes to great pains to explain in detail how much detail went into bringing down from one level to the level below it. And then from that level to the level below it, which again, what we're talking about here, but again, just to doing the best I can in terms of giving the bigger picture as we start to zoom into how he's going to do it. So the words hishtal shiluta madrigot means the unfolding or the you might call it the de, uh, the devolution of levels devolution the way i use it meaning to say a downward um unfolding a telescoping downward where each low each lower level is not infinitely but almost infinitely lower than the level above it down from level to level, this light of the insult went, descended further and further, stage after stage, until it descended to become revealed in the action, the operation of the, re, of the existence of the Olamod Bia, in their, in their governing of these lower worlds. So the worlds themselves are part of the hishtal shirut, of a downward flow. And then the governance over these words, each one according to its level, is everything is governed from above. Governance meaning hanhaga is, a, is an important word, especially um, talking about Hashem oversees and supervises everything that goes on. So Hashem is inside the system. He's overseeing the system at the same time. It says in um, in Shir Shiri, Mitzitz Mina Harakim. Mashgiach Mina Halonot. He oversees through the windows and he peers or peeks through the cracks. We see that um, he made the world in such a way that he can he can see all the way down, and he is in he has his presence is all the way down all the way, but but it's done in such a way that the the son of the king the or the, the the child of the father has to look for the father right the peaking the the revealing himself for a second and then hiding again. To, to arouse us. Kidei lehavin ksat seder et pashtut hamadrigot shibat silut in order to understand a little bit of this unfolding process, of this emanation process, sidram, the orders of the unfoldings, and the kishuram, and the interconnectedness of one level to the next, zeba zeng. We're going to start from the latter to the former. We're going to start from the effect to the cause, from that which comes last to that which precedes it. That is to say, to start from what we see in this world. And from this, we will begin to start to see, to make a hekesh, to understand by way of intuition, if something is like that here, then it goes up and becomes more and more subtle and more and more subtle, but we can grab onto it from the bottom and rise up. 
And it's really an endless ladder. At every point, we have a new level of understanding. Like it's like you go up a building, you get off the first floor in the, in the elevator, and there's a whole new world there. You go up the second floor, and the third floor, and the fifth floor. It's the same building, but whole new panoramas open up of what the building is about. So the, again, when you go back down, you go back down with an, 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 a completely different understanding of what the system is about. This is not a new idea. It was the Rambam Moshe Cordovero speaks about it. He bases it in his co his commentary on Petichat Eliyahu, and he starting from below and then going up and coming back down with a with a transformed vision, a transformed a perception, a transformed cognition, transformed consciousness. Okay, so we will understand a little bit um, of things that, as they go up to their root in holy and in holy of holies. That is going up and up. The, the lesson basically works with a spatial system going up and up and up, even though there's a whole level of way of seeing it that it's really right here. This You don't have to go anywhere, but it's easier, certainly at the beginning, to, be, to use a a, um, a vertical, um, you know, model of one level above the other. And yes, there's a whole thing that there's a interpenetration of the higher levels down into the lower levels, but they're largely hidden. So it's both, as the Zohar says, da le'elamin da, each level above the level below it, and it's da lego min da, and every higher level an aspect of the higher level comes in and is mirubash, it dresses up in and becomes the inner soul level of the level below it. So it's both. So since this, the whole purpose of this is to feel this, I want, you know, you know, see how you can feel that you have higher levels within you and how they go all the way down to your feet. They, they are in your genitals, they are in your stomach, they're in your stomach cavity, they're in your chest, they're in your neck, they're in your upper chest, they're in your neck and they're in your face and in your skull, these higher levels. You are an embodiment of these higher levels. And then there's also what's called ovi. There's like that the, not just the head is higher than the heart in terms of it being the, the, the actual brain center, right? And the heart doing its job within is the internalization of consciousness within the heart. But there's the, the, the layers within us so that there's, later on we see that there's nefesh ruach neshama of neshama. There's nefesh ruach neshama of ruach, nefesh ruach neshama of nefesh. So it's a, it's a, a system that's completely um, unified in every aspect of it, almost embodying the entire system in every detail, in every detail. So, so he just said he wants to take us up to the top from the bottom. We will begin and we will say, we see in all things that exist that are in this world, generally speaking and also in details, everything has two aspects, minimum two aspects, which he calls here Chomer mm Bitsura, -hmm. the physical um, material and the Tsura, which is the spiritual form. So he's using chomer here as matter, like chomer gelem is raw material. Sura is taking a piece of wood, which is which is a tree, which is wood, which is molecule wood molecules, and cutting it or whittling it down into a form, whether it's a chair or a table. So that's giving it, that's imposing form on it, right? But it itself is the raw material. But he gives us, thank God, um, 
a set of parallel terms. So you can make a chart. So you have here um, Surah in Homer. Next you have Goof, excuse me, you have Nefesh in Goof. We'll keep them, the, the right column for me at least will be Nefesh and Surah, the spiritual form, the soul level. Homer, the physical matter, and the, the body. Okay, next he says, as this is really what I'm saying to you here is the Sar, the Etzachim has 50 gates to it, and it's in the last gates of that time where the Ari goes into this, because the Ari starts at the top and goes to the bottom. He gives us another cross-reference. He's going to give us more terms later. It's a little bit hard. I I didn't accept this at first so easily. There's no such thing as physical matter without some kind of spiritual form, and there's no such thing as spiritual form without physical matter. And I said, why? It's not. It doesn't work. It doesn't seem to be true. It, at first sight, it doesn't seem to be true. He needs to explain what he means as he goes on, and, say, and you'll see retroactively what he means here. But basically, his point is you can't have one without the other. How? He'll explain. And he says, this is true even though the Hagam Shem Shnei Mitzuyot, even though they're two different levels of reality. Asheim Ruchukim Bemadrigatam Zemizeh, they're like very different. The soul and the body are very different. Harbei Meod, in Kozeh nevertheless, Inehem Mityachadim, Zebezeh, nevertheless, they unite with each other. Biyichud Atsum, an almost unbreakable Unity, it's to the extent you can't even find one without the other. Again, what he's talking about is referring to. Why is he so strong about this? He'll tell us. But in the meantime, he's making these strong, strong statements. The Indian is that the whole thing I want to talk about here. He says, "Is ki kol roim shem bet madrigot ugvo malata tzura ala chomer." The fact is, it's like this. We call them two. Different levels of existence. Ugvo me'alat atzura ala chomer be'in erech, and the 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 level of the tzura of the spiritual form is higher than the material matter. It's 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 almost it's not even any comparison. The tzura is much higher, much subtler, much more more all encompassing. In its existence, than the chomer, the physical matter. There's a um, there's a uh, biologist. What's his name? I like him, but I forgot his name. So he said he's he says that there's such a thing called a um words not coming. But every physical plant has a um oh gosh. It has a, a spiritual, he doesn't use the word spiritual. Like an aura. Again, but he's talking, he's talking biology. He says it has a, a, a mind that's over and above it that directs its evolution, directs its growth. Gosh, I just forgot the words. So, um, it's like what we're thinking tomorrow. The, yeah, right. there's no there's no blade of grass that doesn't have an angel right. in Shemaim saying grow, getting it and saying grow. So here it's right down into the into the every single thing and also all of nature itself. So he within biology, gosh, I'll bring his name in and I'll send you nice stuff from him. Um, he's really not accepted anymore because he got so philosophical. And he was, everything he was saying was bordering on spirit. 
I first found out about him from a, in a book called um, um, Meetings with Sages and Saints by a, a Jewish girl named Renee Weber. And she went around interviewing the Dalai Lama and this fellow here and other physicists and also David Baum, David Yosef Baum, B-O-H-M. She did four interviews with him. I learned so much from these interviews and fantastic. I have the um, the PDF of the book, actually. Somebody made it for me. So it's a very worthwhile look, thing to look at. And this incredible cross currents between what these physicists and biologists are saying with the Kabbalah. The idea is, was very important for me because the Lubavitcher Rebbe said that he believed that um, that um, you could still believe in six human days of creation. I myself don't go by that. And it, it felt much too constricting to me because I have plenty of sources, especially from the Leshem himself, that we're talking about huge spans of time that are called six days because they're God days, but they're not six days because human time didn't start until Adam. And even then, it's in the Garden of Eden, even then immediately after he was out of the Garden of Eden, there's no, there's no such thing as time as we know it at that, at the, at, at that stage of history. Whatever the case, though, that I found that if you do want to believe in six days, this man's theory is very beautiful, is that the overriding spiritual tzura for every entity can speed up its evolution hmm. far beyond the laws that we know, the physical laws we know, the Homer laws. So um, I'll make available his name and what he's saying, just not coming to me, bro. But Homer Tzura is, is, is an ancient, it's Aristotle, Rambam. A lot of them spoke about the physical aspect of something and its spiritual aspect. What he's about to do is what's really what helped, what helped me and what I enjoyed so much about this is after talking about it in terms of what we are familiar with, he says then, and we'll repeat, that the idea of Tzura is far beyond uh, incomparably beyond the the um the homer level he ne koze hu rak ba homer bitsura shibahol hanim saim shibaulama ze gufa that's only when we're talking about how different they are and how one is much higher than the other that's only when we're talking about within a particular dimension or world or system Within a particular system, there's a tzura and a chomer. The tzura is above, it's surrounding, it's much higher, much more subtle, much more, it's, it's, it's intelligent design. And the chomer is the, is the recipient of the, of the directions and the guidance that are given by the tzura. Even in the womb, the rabbis say that the, that the um, above the embryo, as it develops, there's a spiritual being there almost like it's holding a candle there. It's not a literal, obviously. Mm -hmm. It's holding a candle and teaching the embryo what it needs to know about its life from beginning to end. And even what it, even the larger uh, dimensions or, 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 or parameters of existence, not just this little baby's life, but all of life, and then coming down to what it needs to know for its life. And of course, it's forgotten, but in the meantime, then it's teaching it. It's overseeing its development. So he says here, the idea that surahs is incomparably, incomparably higher than Homer is only when we're talking only about within this world. Or within any particular dimension, whether it's Asiya, our dimension, or Yitzira, or Bria. Within Bria, the Tzura level, or can look at the Shemaim level, the heaven level, is much higher than the earth level of Bria. The, the Malbim says this explicitly in his commentary on Bereshit, where Bereshit bar Elohim at the Shemaim v'ta'aretz applies at every level at every of every dimension. This is a heaven and an earth. And that's, that's so, so typically Kabbalistic. He was an incredible, an incredible master 
the Malbim. And they were very close to the Leshem in the, in the Malbim. Which you say also applies to uh, Attilus with, with respect to Adam Kadmon. Absolutely. Yeah. So although each, each system in itself is huge, and we're talking about it as if we can like make, you know, put it in our little pocket. Mm -hmm. No, yeah. it's much bigger. But what he does want to do is he wants to give us familiarity with the system so we can start talking about it in a meaningful way. And that it's basically a system that begins above and telescopes downward and that the how the interconnectedness happens. So what he's about to tell us here is now is how does the earth level of the upper level of the upper dimension become the source for the heaven and the earth of the lower. And the Hebrew terms are the tachton of the elyon, the chomer of the elyon, the lower aspect of the higher dimension becomes the source for the sur and the chomer, for the form and the matter, or the heaven and the earth of the lower dimension. The life force that sustains it. The life existence. force, right. And how how then, how exactly it does it, He's not, he's going to get it, not going to get into the, every detail here. He's going to wait a little bit, but he's going to give us the basic thing that we need in order to work with the, the information. So let me just read the words. So it's only when it's within a particular dimension or world, but aval, aval me olam le olam, but from one dimension to the next, in inasa, behold, is made meachomer shel olam elyon from the matter, the chomer, of the upper dimension, tzura shel olam hatachton, the higher level of the lower dimension is made in and by the lower level of the upper dimension. So the interdimensional is begun. That's where things change. That's where you're no longer limited to the to the worldview that mocks and makes fun, but takes very seriously that there are higher levels. Can I ask a question? Yes. The lower level of any particular world, the Tachnon, is that Malchus, which is also the Keter of the world above? Okay, so he's early in the book. He's not using spherotic uh -huh. terms yet. Mm -hmm. But well, of course, this is yeah, very often so vivid, but, this uh, very often talked about in terms of the malchut of the elyon. Yes, all right. It's clear we're talking elyon means the upper and tachton is the top. So the malchut of the elyon um, goes down and fills, first of all, the keter of the tachton, fills it, mm -hmm. and then from there fills the entire system all the way down to the malchut, but in lesser and lesser degrees. So there's going to be sublevels within every dimension. Here's here he's not talking about the sublevels. He's just talking about two two levels to each mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to each one. Mm -hmm. So get your you know just think what's what's going on here. How can I connect to the level above me? Why have I had trouble? What's the block? And maybe I have been connected and they haven't told me. And they haven't told me how much I'm connected. And now, so therefore, this information is pretty nice and very, very rejoicing information. Right? So that now when David and Melech or Yeshayahu or whatever, they're saying what they're saying in their Nevua states, or David is talking about Hashem, help me, El El Yon, or and I can use a number of verses, but for sure, um, even when I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will no longer need to fear evil because because you, your higher level is with me. Yeah, it's happening within the framework now that I'm in a really tight spot, but you are here within that situation. And you can just take, just go and go examples. The whole thing of miracles, of, of the opening of the heavens that happened at the Red Sea. That we say in Marav every day, your children saw your Gevura, which by defin definition makes it easier if you if you give it a, a definition, which is your open miracles that you did for us at the at, right? 
at the Red Sea. Hashem, we, they saw your open miracles at the Red Sea. They praised and, and went to an ecstatic state of praising your name. And they and they acknowledged your name. So we can see in a minute why what's the connection? If they saw your open miracles, why are they only acknowledging your name? And they received and accepted upon themselves their your machut. Again, what's a, if you see your Hashem's Gevora, which is as their open miracles, why are you accepting his machut? What does machut mean relative to his miracles? Right? And so if you really think how profound of what the deep wisdom that they put in here in these prayers and that we say them and if we're about Shuvah, and then we say them and try and think about them. And if we're not about Shuvah, then who cares? We just say them. Oh, <laughs> sorry. Okay, so, but it goes on before I give the answer, which for me is very important. Then later, shortly after, it says, Malchutacha, Hashem Elokeinu Ro'obanecha. Your children saw your Malchut. <clears throat> Wait a second. Just a second ago, we said that they saw your Gevura, and they accepted your Malchut. There's this thing here. They saw your mouth. It all becomes melech now. Okay, so what it is, is... Could I suggest what it might be? Or? Yeah, go ahead. Could it be that they saw the unity within the multiplicity of melchus? They saw your unity that's, that's manifest within the multiplicity of Malchus. Malchus as a, as a unit, as, as a functioning, coherent whole. Okay, but let yes. me say a little just, differently in the sure, meantime, yeah. just to give more specific definition. <clears throat> Unity parallel. Why if they, saw, if they saw a revealed miracle, that they accept his Malchut and his name and acknowledge his name? Because his name is what's there all the time, but it's more hidden. His malchut is what's there the whole time. It's his hidden providence with which he interacts with creation in a way that's almost imperceptible if you don't know about it. You might think it's even not even there. But when Hashem opens the heavens and he reveals his malchut to you, then immediately you realize when the, when the heavens close, you say, oh my goodness, it was really here the whole time. Again, you bring back the perception you get in the higher state. You bring it back and you say, oh my goodness, this was here the whole time. And his purpose in revealing it to that higher level is so that I can now have that awareness right now with me. So then it begins to make sense that I received and I now I saw your mouth. What do you mean I saw you? I saw your gavura. No, I it, it means I contemplated what I saw and I realized that really your gavura is really your mouth. It's just a different, a different, a little different uh, part of it. As one is the revealed opening, un, un, you know, overriding of the laws of nature, and the other one is closing and making like nature again. Everything is nature: the sun, the moon, the stars, and you, and the, <laughs> the clouds, and the ocean, and everything. Where's God? Or you can you look at it, you look at your friend, look at a, look at your look at each other. Where's God? And like you're looking at God right, in the other person, and you're saying, "Where's God?" It's not a total blindness. Or where's God? I'm looking at myself from the outside and say, oh, "I have ears. Yeah, fine. I have ears. I have a mouth. Fine. I have a brain, spinal cord, cortex. Doesn't matter. Where's God? Hello. You know, like where are you? Why are we so blind? Because we see each other from the outside. Can I quote Einstein? All that is Hashem's mouth. It's the hidden presence of the of the ain't self within such a way and such a manifestation that's so modulated that if you don't know about it, so Kabbalah comes and says, "Let me tell you what's been here the whole time." And it doesn't. You have to. You don't have to create it. You don't have to invent it. You don't have to convince anybody. You don't even have to convince yourself. It's not in the Muna. What do you want to say? Einstein said there are those who believe there's no such thing as a miracle. And those who live as the only thing that exists is miracles. Everything is a miracle. I think yes. that's beautiful. Okay. So once he opens us up to the interdimensionality, so there's a technical thing here that there's a there's there's a higher dimension 
And that higher dimension is the lower dimension relative to the dimension above it, et cetera, et cetera, all the way up. And they're all interconnected and interface with each other. And they're all one complete unified system. So that when we're connected to the little bit, one just immediately above us, we're connected to everything up to the top. In a sense, mm. like I'd like to do is to skip to the last, the last paragraphs of this shark. Very exciting. I, 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 I have these translated. I translated the, the beginning and the end of the English to make it as easy as possible to really get these ideas. Um, and to get the point of it. So we're skipping to page four. And uh, this, it's, I mean, because uh, I want it, I want you to know that you can go and look at all the stuff between the beginning and the end and say, and, and th th you have, you will do it on your own and say, if that's what he's saying, I want to know what it is from the inside. I want to read the beginning, middle, and end. So I'm asking you to find that in yourself, that you're willing to give some time to read these words. I myself, I did you, get, did you get my email that I sent you today? The reply. I sent you. No, no, the, the reply to what you sent. Oh, the, me. no, I didn't. Oh, okay. So I have a I I I I circle words. Words are very important. Of how if a word is repeated um, a number of times, and it, there's a reason for it, and so it's a it's a way of of making a text that's just like a sea of letters. Put some put some marks on the page. Make like you've been there so that you can come back in a few months or a few years and say, I was here. I was here. It's a place, right? Okay. So here we are. The end here on page four, the top page for Ha'ilano, Al Kopani. When the when the Leshem says Al Kopanim, in Hebrew, Al Kopani means one way or the other. But in the Leshem, al Kalpani means when you see all sides of the matter. Mashanu ro'im, when taking all the different aspects of the matter into consideration, mashanu ro'im b'seder kol ha-metziyut sheba'olam azeh, we see that the entire reality of this world, ki nizdar kol ahad mechol mevetsura, it's organized around the principle of homer and surah. And then I, and, uh, he gives um, the, the, the parallel terms, which I was looking for before, but now he gives them. Which is goof in the Shema? Chomer and Sura is goof in the Shema, which is Kli and Or, the vessel and the light. Chitzoniyot the Pinimiyot, the external level of existence and the Pinimiyot. So that's your chart. Chomer and Sura. Is the same as goof in the shama body and soul, which is the same as kli and or, which is vessel and light, which is the same as external and internal. In general, he says, In general, the external level is always governed by the internal level within, or the goof is always governed by the soul, the chomer is always governed by the tsura, etc. And the or. And the permeates the kli. Permeates the kli, mm -hmm. in in a way that doesn't overwhelm the kli, which mm -hmm. is one of his points. That's why we mm -hmm. talk about the tachton of the elyon, that only the lowest aspect of the elyon, sometimes called kitzet kitzet tachton, the lower extremity of the elyon, sometimes called a kav or he'ara, an illumination, or a line that goes down from the from the from the tzura and then the shama, it goes down into and becomes the inner filament that fills the lower dimension. Even then, again, as I say, there's a there's there's sublevels of how it fills. So we believe that there's not as much light in our feet as there is in our head. That's just you know, our feet don't have the brain power. Hmm. No, not, not withstanding that David said, I was going somewhere and my feet took me somewhere else and I and my, my feet knew where I need to go. There is a thing about feet. But okay, in general, in general. From there, the tzura, as he said, it permeated. The because color. it permeates. Okay. And that says by Abraham Avinu that he saw the angels. By Yaakov Avinu, uh, after he saw the ladder, by Yaakov Draglav. He picked up his feet. 
Mm. And the, the, the more, more a naive has a whole tour on, on the feet. And the, also. And the ikva the Meshicha is we're in the feet now. And yes. the feet have a brain level that's perhaps lower than the head, but it's important to connect the feet back to the head. Okay, like, you know, when you're doing um, physiotherapy, you can, you can touch the, the, the organs of the higher, all the organs of the entire body through the feet. And we are the we are the feet of history. And there's a halacha when a person's in a room with a ghost, says she's not supposed to stand at the foot of the bed because the neshama leaves the body through the feet. Wow, that's interesting. Ooh. Wow. Ooh, yeah. Through the feet. Wow. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. Because there, there is, there is a teaching that leads to here, mm -hmm. I mean, just below the hairline. Nikudot ametzach. Lay down. Interesting. Mm -hmm. We go to the next one. The ota pininu, that inner level, shuha or v'neshama, which is the light level, which is the whole soul level. Omed ikaralamala. Its, its essential level is remains above. Only its lowest extremity is he who is what spreads forth downward lamata viored and descends umit labesh and dresses up in bitochaguf in the body, the light, the soul level, the lowest extremity of the soul level. That's you and me. It dresses up in our body. The neshama shabo to become the inner level of the soul within the body. Its main aspect remains above, like we said in the name of the gra. Only it sparkles down, the gra says. Sparklings. The word sparklings are very beautiful. Rabbi Nachman says also sparklings. Beautiful. It's called nitzots or smit leit notzets. It's sparkling. Yes. The higher level sparkles down insights and intuitions. If you're open to it, it becomes more and more, more and more who you are. If you disregard the hit notes and if you disregard the sparklings, it'll get to you some way, somehow. You'll stub your toe, right? Something will happen. Why not get it the best way, which is the positive way? The sparklings of the higher level of the soul. And then the aspect that comes in, I think I said at the bottom here, the aspect that comes in is called ruach. And then it finally settles within the body is nefesh. But the intermediary between the neshama, that's the part that stays up, and the level that comes in is the ruach. And in terms of placement, we usually say neshama, ruach, nefesh. And that it's a, it's like, again, the neshama goes all the way down, it's then dresses up in and becomes the inner soul filament of the ruach, of our identity. This is the super conscious. This is our higher level of who we are. This is our ruach. This is our identity. This is who we know ourselves to be, our conscious self, our adult self. And this is our lower self, our lower, the lower, lower parts of the reason why we were born, what we have to fix, what we have to rectify. But even down here, there's neshama. If I, if I allow that to come in, and I can feel the, the intuitions that I need to do, the way I eat, the way I take care of myself, the way I exercise. When I, am, I, am I open to and am I listening to the subtle voice of what I need to do in order to become healthier or the better person I want to be? So all these are, are, are I consider, part of this teaching. We'll read a little bit more because the time. So... Omed ikaralamala, the main aspect of the soul remains above. The lowest extremity of the neshama. That is what spreads forth downward. The yored, and it descends. And it dresses up in the garment of the goof. To be its soul. And is by way of that lowest extremity. Which are, in the English, they call it a spiritual projection. Like the real me 
the real you, the real us is, 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 the, is the spiritual being that we are. Our incarnation into these bodies, into this personality, into this person who knows himself as himself or herself as herself, that's the projection. That's the matrix, right? And what we want to do is to wake up, right, the aspect that's the higher aspect within the matrix. So we can be in transforming the world with the power of the soul. Can I give another quotation from the outside? Yeah. We are not physical beings having a spiritual experience. We are spiritual beings having a physical experience. Right. That's the paradigm shift, basically. Yes. Beautiful. It's not mine. <laughs> okay. It's not any of us, but it's 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 it has to become common knowledge. It's that's what a person who's growing up, and that's why a cab driver in Israel will call you Nishama. So that's that's right what does he mean even maybe he doesn't really think about it but maybe some of them actually do and they yeah. have very deep deep reasons because they understand you gotta call your friends and your in the people you meet nishana because that immediately puts you in another place with that person it's so beautiful and so when we talk to our children nishama nishama you're 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 an awesome soul. You don't know who you are yet, but you're growing into it, and 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 it's frustrating to not know who you are. And I had that frustration also. I had an identity crisis until I was forty. Who am I? Yeah, and I still have one. I just, but it's not a crisis anymore. <laughs> now I enjoy it. <laughs> okay. Not to know who you are. How can you? How can you live like that? I need to know if I'm this or that. No, you don't. You you can't. You can't. You can't take a a, a booby prize, in, instead of the real thing. The real thing comes in stages, and it's beautiful. And and you can't. You can't always put your finger on it. But it's it's the real you. It's the real thing. It's yep. the infiniteness within each one of us. I once said to my wife, Lesser, Allah Shalom, that. Um, well, no, she said, it seems to me that you're having a midlife crisis. I thought, you know something, I think you're right. I thought he'd already done that. She howled at that. <laughs> Great. Okay, fantastic. So here, this uh, we'll read the English for a second. How does the soul light level govern the body vessel level? The essence of that very internal soul light level remains above so that only its kitsei tachton, lowest extremity, spiritual projection extends and descends downward into the body vessel. This projection enters the, into the body level and serves there as its indwelling soul. It is then via that kitsei tachton, the via the beam, that the soul light level projects from above. It's via that that the body draws its life source and ex life force and its existence from above for as long as this is decreed. It's like Hebrew. By way of this, this the ruach level, which is the the intermediary between the shaman and, and nefesh, the body is shoev. It's chiyut. Shoev is draws. Hmm. What's a better word for shoev than draw? Um, it's the shoev. It's, you show you show have mine. You 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 shaft in mine You shall draw water with joy from the the well springs of 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 salvation. That's is, but um, shoev to draw to draw out either to draw up from below or to draw down from above to draw out from being hidden mm -hmm. to draw in to draw draw is draw it receiving or is it just is obvious draw, drawing is more active it's more mm, proactive mm, yeah i need that i need to draw in a breath right now otherwise i can't breathe anymore i need to draw in a breath shoev shoef shoef is is uh interesting whereas shoef is to to really powerfully desire something there's um no shem and show F is breathing in and breathing, exhaling and, and, and inhaling. Okay, the main thing is that if we're without breath for too long, there's only so much you can hold without another breath. You need to show Ev. 
that next breath. It's life and death. That's so what you here, say here in the note. You say this idea of the ruach being that which connects the nefesh yeah. and the neshama. Right. So without mentioning these terms yet, because he's early in the book, and he really wants to give you just something without technical terms. So he's starting out with Homer and Sura. Um, okay. Now, ve'otash aneshama shu atzura yikari dekol metziut asher omed lamala. That from its position above, but via its projection within the body, the soul light level constantly works on the body vessel level. Again, in Hebrew, ve'otash aneshama shu atzura ha'ikari dekol metziut asher omed lamala hinehu poel behametziut tamid ve'eno minicha rega achat belo peula. Not for a single moment does the soul leave the body without activity, but rather it pushes and compels it to grow and develop to its full potential, like we said about the angel that strikes the, the blade of grass. Or this um, thing that this from this biologist that I still can't remember his name is terrible. And the and the word that he uses for, for this incredible or makif level around the, the plant, the animal. Mm -hmm. That's the overriding organizing principle that can that can influence the, the 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 entity, the physical entity over and above its physical level, because it's not limited by the physical. This is a secular biologist. Or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I wonder who it was. Let's look it up for a second. It's worth it. Was. Okay, Habibi. I'm gonna go and do it real quick. Dropbox. That. By the way, while you're doing Ketze, is that with um, uh, Segul or with Shva? Ketze. Ketze, it's a Shva. Ketze Elyon. Ketze Tachton. Yeah, it's with Shva and both. Well, uh, yeah, Ketze. Yeah, no, it's not, it's not Segul. Yeah. Okay. Mm. It has to be here, but you don't always know where you have things. And dialogues. Yeah, here we go. Dialogues with sages and saints. Renee Weber. Rini. In fact, we will get the name of the guy. His name is Rupert Sheldrake. Oh, yes. Rupert? Rupert. Rupert. Sheldrake. Page 105. Morphogen morphogenetic fields. Morphogenetic. Yes. Right. Morphogenetic. Morpha is form. It's sura. Yes. Yes. Morphogenetic, morphogenetic fields. Fields around which was my, which helped me in a, in a paper I did once called The Age of the Universe, based on Arya Kaplan's work, where I disagree, you with, I disagree with Rabbi Kaplan. What did you call it? Age of the Universe. Oh, The Age of the Universe, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Muslim and also disagrees with him. He has a whole, he has a nice thing, oh. isn't he? He was very, he was very, he was very uh, it would take us off, but I just yeah. want to say that, that if you want to hold like the Bab Rebbe, that Hashem made the world with fossils, Right. In other words, it, it wasn't made the words, but it made it old. He it made, it, made old. it old, right. Yeah. Don't like that. Yeah. I don't like that. And Kaplan calls it painting yourself into an intellectual corner. Yes. Right. And he also said that it, 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 Hashem is not out to pull a fraud on us. Right. right. Nice. Yeah. But on the other hand, the Bab Shrebi was not somebody who we want to completely <laughs> disagree with. Yeah. So so yeah. Rupert helped me that that um that Hashem could do the whole thing in six human days. And they, um, because he's not limited to the rules of physics that we are presently within. So uh, it could be. So I think one of the reasons to emphasize that, if I recall, is that he felt that there was a halakhic nafkamina, that Shabbat is the seventh day, it has to be mm. seven actual days. Mm. I think that's one of the reasons he really? says that. I, I, I wouldn't feel I wouldn't feel bound by that. Then. Oh, it's funny enough. That's interesting because I would. <laughs> seventh, the seventh day 
everything that Hashem says about the seventh day, you know. Again, the lesson days. himself, if anyone's if anybody wants anybody wants to see what he says, I write about it in my book, Spiritual Technology, also in in Well of Living Waters, because it's important uh, how he says there the, the Friday of creation when Adam Arishan was was created and etc. was was at least a thousand years. The Friday itself. So, well, how should you deal with that, that, right? That's our bar. No, he's a, yeah, it's a yeah. different thing. Yeah, assuming, yeah. I mean, we can put both. A thousand years. Uh, no, the idea of a verse in, yeah, in Tehillim yeah. is a thousand years in your eyes yes. are as a day gone by is usually applied to the 6,000 years of history that came after the six days of creation, the seven right, days of right, creation. Right. How do we deal with the seven days of creation? How does the Kabbalah deal with it? How does, right, and how do we deal... Now you can, so, you can, it's a lot of people get mixed up and a lot of people get turned off. So, you know, you want to be able to be open. There's no single way to look at it. Right. If you're comfortable right. with billions of years, there's a way to do it and it's no problem. Right. And, no and there's no, no in, in many ways, that's true. practical ways, that's true, yeah. difference. Yeah. It's just, Except for what we said before. That, yeah. you know, in six days, under the seventh day, and the seventh day is the culmination and the bringing Kedusha into the whole creation. You know, it's, 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 it's a sequence. On the seventh day, we keep a Shabbos as a memory of the whole thing, as partaking of the whole thing. So, I mean, that, that you could say is if enough committed. Zohar basically is telling you that there's no one single level oh, yeah. to learn the Torah at. For sure, for sure. There's a Shemaim Ba'aretz at every level. Yes. So why would you want to squeeze it into a little box yeah. and say the Torah must mean this? Because they know, they would, the sages would never do such a right. thing. No, I'm okay. just saying there's no enough community. I'm saying okay, maybe right. there is. Oh, absolutely. So you are. Okay, I mean, so... You know, and equally well, and you say that you know, Hashem could have done it in six days. Equally well, you could say the same thing in a different way, that Hashem changed the laws of nature during those six days. He was the one who created the laws of nature in the first place. And so they, they, the laws of nature themselves evolved. But in, from Hashem's perspective, it was six days. Okay, well, we believe, there's all we sorts believe, of ways of saying believe in divine evolution or divine devolution, as we're talking about here, mm -hmm. that Hashem brought about lower and lower universes. So there's all kinds of questions yes. that get answered when you get this system of wisdom. The Ari himself asks the famous question, why did Hashem um, wait to create this, this lower world? And he says he didn't wait at all. He was already doing a lot before it got here. It couldn't have come in the Hishtalship, in the down downward devolution of worlds this world couldn't exist without the prior world before it and that one couldn't exist without the one prior to it so it's a holistic situation where it's not piecemeal it's not you know if if god created this world why didn't he create it before <clears throat> what was he doing well, i just want to finish this it's for for me it's um it's it's um to to, to, to bring it to the table to talk about it so we see that the <clears throat> that the soul doesn't leave the body for a moment, meaning to say the personality or the inner the inner person doesn't leave it for a moment without activity. The soul's job is to rectify the lower material aspect, its junior physical counterpart below, so that what? So that it may eventually return it to itself above for perpetuity. Oh, so we now have that there's going to be a reverse elevation after this all of these sense and down to a physical world where god is completely hidden that the soul's job the souls in heaven the higher souls are all very active right now but what's going down here on the planet right and those who want the spiritual the ruach HaKodesh to come down they you open yourself up to it because the world is getting more and more physical more and more physical and this it it has to now start the reverse is that the Ruach HaKodesh has to come in, is that um, that the lower world has a certain point, a nadir, to which it reaches, at which point it turns around and starts to start going back up. The elevation of the physical world, which is, in terms of mo more modern terms, the amplification of the energy frequency of physical matter. It'll, the molecules will start moving faster. Right, it'll feel to some people like the physical world is breaking apart, that it's losing its form, mm. its physical form. It's scary out of hell for somebody 
who doesn't know that it's just the opening to the next level up. So that's what he's starting to, to do now. He says, there's going to be a return. Where Now, he's going to do two things now. Please stay with me. Where does the body level of, of reality come from? Where you know what? Hey, where does the this Homer level came from in the first place? He did talk about it, but now he wants to clarify it to like really define it. Where did the body level come from? The body vis a vis, vis, vis the, the tsura, the body vis a vis the soul. We said in this chapter in this shar that it came from the body level of the of the dimension above. Uh huh. Well, he's going to say that again now, but much more clearly. Before the lower material aspect descended below, it too existed within its soul level above, included within it. In other words, as Baum, Yosef Baum, David Yosef Baum said oh. it was in the implicate order. Yes. It was it was within the level above it. It was just that its inclusion there's an impl implicate potential. I use Baum's word. It is thus in order to bring it forth into full existence and allow its qualities to unfold from potential to actual that this entire process was activated. Hashem wants a world where there's lower and lower dimensions. And each dimension is precious and beloved. And he has it planned all from the very beginning before it all starts. Though so he modulates its light, his light in such a way that every higher universe gives birth to the, le the level below it. And that universe is very precious because there's a certain level of consciousness there. And when you get finally down to our universe and us in this universe, right? He has a lot going on this one. This is really important. This is not, this is this is a, a very, very serious game. That what? That he has now brought down what was in potential. He's brought it to full manifestation. It can only come to full manifestation through all this whole series of descents. In other words, if you're too, if you're tied to your mommy's apron strings, you can't be yourself. Mm. You have to you have to cut this string in order to be separate, in order to develop on your own. It's called the camel concept in the Torah. There's always camels around Yitzhak, and camels can drink all because of camel. He had to be a, a camel vis-a-vis -vis his father Avram. Avram is so overwhelming. His chesed was so great. Yitzhak was Gavur. I got to be myself. Everything I do happens to be a, a spit in the image of my father, but and I even look like him. But I, I really got to be myself. So camels are all, all throughout the story of Avram and Yitzhak. Those camels can drink a lot of water, and go for weeks in the desert. They're still drawing from the original, but they're doing it on their own. And as the ability to be myself and separate myself just enough to become me is so important here. So Hashem has a lot, a lot of love for us because we're just, he wants us to be just separate enough. It's called Magen Davi, Magen Abraham. A Magen is a very thin membrane, just enough to be separate, but to know that I'm connected. Right, right. So the first brach of the Shemona Esrei is Avraham, Yitzhak, Yaakov, all in one, all within Abraham. The second brach of the Shemona is Yitzhak. Ata gibor Hashem. You hide yourself, Hashem. Your power is that you hide yourself. To the olam, you hide in the olam, and therefore there's the possibility of death and sickness and 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 for and and, and, and abandonment and uh, oh my goodness, mm. but that's important. Stage two is always so important that I can come back in stage three, and know that atakadosh that you were here the whole time. What I really wanted to say here, though, with Yitzhak. I guess that was it. This is, is the is, is number two is separation, but just enough separation to have to be able to develop myself, and then to come back. Oh, it's, it's also called dependency, independence, and interdependence. Mm -hmm. Interdependence, in, the, in, in, independence is I don't want anything to do with you. Leave me alone. All right. I want to be me. I need to get, want to be me. And interdependence is I really, really want to have a relationship with you as who I am now. I want to come into intimate relationship with you. I want to appreciate what you are and who you are and who I am. And that's what a husband and wife are. And that's what children and parents can be and friends can be. Interdependency is because I don't depend on you for my existence. 
but I know that my existence is intertwined with yours and that the meaning we have together is greater than the meaning that I have on my own. Ah, oh, Hashem. Let's say, um, so it was in order to give full existence to each tachton that Hashem brought about this whole process. Next. The condition of soul above and body below will therefore not continue forever. The whole point was to bring the potential that was here, bring it into full actuality, and then bring it back with full actuality, stage by stage, reverse, going back, not going back in time and going back in, 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 in less development. No, it's going back with what I've attained here. And with all that I've done and all, to, that I've, right, all the proactive stuff that I've been able to do. And that's why it's so important to be proactive, to do what I can do, to be who I am. And then to take that and to bring that back to God. I'm going to come back now into intimate relationship with you. So this condition of soul above and body below won't exist forever. Why? Thus, after it will have reached completion, the soul light will return after the lower level has reached its completion. By virtue of the light coming in from the soul level, the soul level will return its lower counterpart to itself to gain even greater perfection. It'll raise the lower level up back. Asiya will go back up to Yitzir. It'll pack its bags and will go back up to the Yitzir. And then Yitzir and Asiya will go back up to Bria because that's where they came from. And Bria, Yitzir, and Asiya will go back up to Silu because that's where they came from. Because everything existed in the higher dimension in a more subtle state. But it didn't exist fully blown. Okay. When I read this earlier on today, I had a big question. We'll go into it. And then I read your footnote three, which is there. So I suggest whenever you're reading this, read footnote three. It's right. Very, very good. Yeah. It's also, that's a very important Dera Hashem. And it's also a very important Malbim. I translated the Malbim on Shir Shirin. And um, his. He was, it's very deep. It's beautiful. It's like really, um, it's like, uh, it's, he goes into it as the relationship between the soul and the body. As not just the relationship of Israel to, to God, the historical. He goes into the, the spirit, the psycho spiritual level. And it's incredible. And on, the, on some of the last verses, one of the last verses of Shir Shirim is, We have a little sister. The enla, the shadai men, the shadai men, and she has no breasts. Mana se la hotenu, the yom she baba. What shall we do with our sister on the day that she'll be spoken for? The pshat means that we want to marry her off. And the soul level is that this little sister is the nefesh, is the aspect of soul that came in and became identified with the body. The neshama comes down in order to develop this nefesh. This is what we said before. It never stops acting on and pushing the nefesh to grow. Say a bracha. Realize that Hashem didn't give you this apple for nothing. Realize that you need to do something. You have to get up in the morning. You have to do something. So the neshama is, is not a cruel master, but the, but the neshama wants our lower part of ourselves to respond and to grow into greatness. Um, so he says, what will we do for our sister, the Nefesh, on the day that she will be spoken for, on the day of death? Im um, If she was a wall, if the Nefesh was a wall, in other words, it stood strong. We will build for her a castle of silver. The Malbim says, Kisufim, it's the yearnings, the yearnings of the tzaddikim to have the higher worlds, the palaces of the higher worlds. If she was a wall and she stood against all the desires that came across her and tried to pull her down, if she was a wall, we'll build for her the higher worlds. They'll be there, they'll be there for her. But if not, if she was a door, if she was going back and forth, and she had no, she didn't, she didn't, she went back and forth. She didn't really establish herself. Then we will bury her in cedar wood. She'll go down to the grave with the body. And this is her chance to become an eternal 
nefesh, the neshama is going to take the nefesh up to Shemaim. Yes. So here he's talking about that. The neshama is going to take the nefesh back up into its higher level for higher and higher levels of perfection. So the body vessel will then attain the purpose for which it was brought forth from into existence, which is none other than to ascend forever from one high level to the level above it ad infinitum. But not only the body gains, it is a privilege, an elevation, and a great fixing for the soul itself when it has bestowed of its perfection on the body. In other words, when you give, you're a giver, you become my God. And that's how you attain the greatest perfection is by giving to others. So whatever level you are at, whatever level any of us are at, for us to give to other, for us to be there for somebody else, is the perfection of who we are. Because we're not thinking of ourselves. Indeed, they were both created for this purpose. The, body, the soul and the body, the light and the vessel. Namely, that the body be completed by its soul. And that the soul would attain greater completeness because of its giving to the body to the personality, to the conscious person, and the, and the body would gain because it would now become higher in its own existence. Um, this, then is a great, the, it's, this then is a great elevation for the soul when it completes the work that it was sent to complete. It is an elevation for the soul, for it too is a body relative to the soul levels that tower above it. Only then may both of them rise ever higher to delight and rejoice in the light of the presence of the infinite one and to merge and become one in the light of his holiness in the final tikkun as was his intention in creating the entire world so the the idea of the circle hashem has an intention he says i want to reveal my light i want to give it to somebody else but there's nobody can take it i need to be able to modulate my light in such a way in such a way that it can be an other there can be somebody else and I'll be getting lower and lower and lower and lower and lower until it's almost invisible and undetectable. And then there'll be a, a human being who will now work up from the bottom and come back all the way up with everything that he or she has and come back up to me and, and more and more revelations at higher and higher levels of who I am and what I am and what I want to give that, that person and that humanity until they come full circle. And even then, that's not the end. But full circle means we come back exactly where we began but we come back with individual consciousness. So that's the Torah that helped me believe in myself, believe I'm part of something greater. I believe that gave me the context that I needed to be just so happy that we have this privilege to be living at this time, even though everything seems to be so dark, but there's so much light. So, yeah. And as, as you, I think you said there, that this process of coming back full circle, it's never complete. It goes on. It's a process. It just gets better and better and it goes on ad infinitum. Yeah. So you yeah. never come complete full circle. Or complete full circle. You'd, you'd have to be because one with God. Even, just, even yeah. if you come full circle, that's the end of this epic. Right. And there's another, right. and there's mother, right. another. Actually, the end of it is at the next page. Behold, it's now clear that the essence of every level of soul and spiritual form, the essence remains above. Only its lowest extremity extends downward to become clothed in the material body. Or if you want to talk about worlds like Yitzira, its lowest extremity extends downward to become clothed in Asiya, etc. In this way, by bestowing its perfection to another, the soul level attains perfection and all the required rectifications are accomplished. It is also clear from what we ex have explained that every lower existence or world or dimension is only a drop in the bucket compared to the higher level from which it derives and through which it is sustained. For remember, the entire existence of the lower extremity was included from its inception in its higher counterpart. We, were, we existed up there. You could call it that we existed in potential as Rabbi Azriel of Gorona says, we existed in a state of non-existence, which is not the same as not existing, right? We existed up there in Hashem's thought, for sure. The entire existence of the lower extremity was included in, in, from its inception in its higher counterpart. Its inception as well as, as, as its continued existence is thus derived solely from the sustenance of the higher level that continually flows down into it. If so, it is clear that every lower level 
relative to its higher counterpart is only a limited illumination. It thus never stands on its own. Rather, it is connected to its source above and forever dependent upon it, and meaning its source, its source, it's never dependent just on the immediate level below, above it, because that level is dependent on the level above it, etc., etc. It's We are connected. I mean, what I got from this is such a beautiful image, such a beautiful vision. And again, that's the spatial way of doing it, that it's up and down, and that all the way up at the very top is the unbelievable light of the Ain Sof, and it's flowing down through all the worlds. And then there's the non-spatial, which is right here. It's right here. There's nowhere that it's not. Right. If you and that's what meditation is, Jewish meditation would be by definition, mm -hmm. allowing myself to, to pull back from the external world of the senses into the inner world of consciousness, of pure breathing, and of even deeper than breathing, of just pure consciousness. Until we we touch upon the core essence of our being and the oneness of that essence in Hashem. Now again, um, I feel that I've experienced it, and I feel that my prayer when I stand in the Shimon Esrei is when I enter into it. There's words, of course, and there's some thoughts. But there's the actual awareness that's deeper than everything. And um, I think what you're talking about is what I call experience, experience the meaning of the words. It's an experience. And it leads to what you're talking about. Not, not just knowledge of the meaning of the words, experiencing the meaning of the words. Bear in mind that Chazal puts <laughs> an awful lot of meaning in those words. For me, Baruch Ata is Beit Aleph. Right. Yeah. So that's where it starts. So the first Baruch of Marav starts Baruch, and the first Mar first second of Baruch of Marav starts Aleph. The same thing in Shachrit. Baruch Ata, and the second Baruch starts Ahavat Olam Avtanu. At night, Ahavat Olam Av Beit Amecha Avta. Aleph is direct connection with, with source, bless you. Bait is to become, a, 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 is, become a, is, is the channel, is the channel through which we connect to the olive, that we become connected to the olive. It has to be so simple. It has to be that when I bow down in Baruch and I rise up, I'm able to stand there on Hashem's name because it's Hashem's name, Yud Ke Vav Ke, and my body is the Yud and the K and the Vav and the K. You're just standing there, whether your hands are like this or like this or down. And you allow yourself to breathe and then you can hold your breath if you can do it without falling down. And you need to bring oxygen into your brain and then you breathe, you breathe out and you, inter and you integrate. And you, you come back down into yourself, into your, into your humanness. And then you go up again, right? You create a pathway, and you can see the yud in the distance. So you can also see the yud here. You can see that you are the yud. You can see that you're within a great yud. There's different levels, but the main thing is the experience becomes so powerful that you allow yourself to melt into it, and 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 it's a, and you stop it. Baruch Hashem. You can stay there for a long time, and you stay there in your mind with the syllable I. Of Adonai. The I continues on in your mind. It's a beautiful sound in your mind. You breathe it. It's a yud, a yud at the end of Adanut. In the connection to the yud at the beginning, yud kebavke, it's not, again, in using hands and spatial, it doesn't, it's, a, it's only in order to give an idea of where we need to go. So I'm blessing everybody and myself that we can, uh, and then in together with, with, when all of us do this or in all of us are doers of this, whether it's on the, at this moment or not, but we are engulfed, engulfed in this, in this high, high, higher surah, the, the neshama level that encompasses all of us. 
and we and we ask to be connected to it even more strongly and that it's it drip it's drips and and trickles down into each one of us and we get empowered so forgive me but that's where it all went today did we that we could stop this class basically or we could go on we have that choice at every we're just the beginning at every right we're just beginning <laughs> right right yeah, so if we travel it together, if there's a sense that this, together with everything else you're learning, you can bring to the table. If you're learning any safer and you want to bring it to the table, if you see some kind of, you know, segue, mm -hmm. it's something that's meaningful to you. Right. And I will continue to the best of my ability with them. The, 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 parts that, do the things that are most um, powerful for me. Right. I've had some interesting interaction here that um you've asked some really important questions and i've tried to interact with you on things that bothered you and if something bothers you and you want to share it with me that that that's like that's mm -hmm. a connecting point you know that's that brings us closer to each other okay mm -hmm. oh, yeah, i think you really you put a lot of things very well together mm -hmm. here here here, here. Yeah. Yeah. can i just give very briefly the nature of the experience I had today when I read this time and again but to a certain point big question big fundamental question related to question today if so then this must be but that can't be that's the way it is the next paragraph answered the question time and again time and again time and again I, I've read this uh, a few yeah. other times yeah it's pretty rich for me and then you can do this with any of the swarm and you get that's what means going in, going in, going in and connecting with the ruach of the of the of the one who wrote it. Because when he wrote it, or he she when he wrote it, he wrote it, he brought it down from here into his pen. And it came into here from there. So when we work backwards, mm. we're working back to his mind and then to where he got it. Mm. So Exactly Someone once to each other in that exactly the same tree of life. Yeah. Someone once told me that he went to the mikvah before he prepared the ink with which he wrote the book. Wow, very nice. I didn't, even, I didn't know that. Either. Right, that was something. Okay, amazing. And at the end, it's all the tzaddikim, it's all the nishamot, all of us together, and in calling on Hashem to help us connect to our higher soul connections. Um. You know, so much. <laughs> the class is officially <laughs> over. <laughs>